Let's move on now to UFC Fight Night, UFC London, a.k.a. UFC Fight Night Blades versus Aspinall. Going down once again at the O2 Arena in London, England, this Saturday night, July 23rd. Let's move our way up through this card, Mark, starting in the welterweight division. Claudio Silva takes on Nicholas Dalby. Give me a quick take and a quick pick. I like this fight. It's an interesting one. Um, both of these guys can look really good and then can kind of look confusingly off at times, I, w- I would say. But I have a lot more confidence in Nicholas Dalby at this point in time. Obviously, Claudio Silva is a guy who beat Leon Edwards um, years back. But I feel like as of late, he doesn't look, look like the same guy in there. He looks like he has kind of fallen off to me. Uh, his jits is nasty, so he's certainly a live dog just because of the fact that if it hits the mat, he's going to have a big advantage. Um, but I, I like I always like Dobby's game. As much as he sometimes loses a fight that I feel like he shouldn't lose, he uh, he's good. He never goes away. He's there all 15 minutes. He keeps bringing it. He does have quality wins, and... I think that he can make Silva work enough. I think he can he can resist the takedown, and I'm going to say he actually kind of pieces him up. 30-27, Dalby. 30-27, Dalby. Okay. Moving on up now to the women's flyweight division. Victoria Leandro takes on Mandy. Uh, I think that name might be Bame. Bomb. It is Bomb? Yeah. German? Okay. Um yeah, this one, two girls who are winless in the octagon so far. Uh, Leonardo's coming back from a broken arm, I believe it was, or wrist. I can't even remember now. I think it was arm. Um, so we will see how, how she looks. Kind of a quick return, honestly. Um, but Bomb should be stronger. She's longer. She had more hype coming in despite dropping her UFC debut. So I will say that it was just a rough debut, and I will go with her to win a decision. Okay, in the lightweight division, Jai Herbert takes on Kyle Nelson. Jai, the Black Country Banger. I love this nickname. Yeah. Taking on the monster, Kyle Nelson. Kyle Nelson, 13-4, and 31-year-old Canadian coming off of a loss against Billy Q. And the Black Country Banger from England, of course, the hometown boy in this matchup, 11-4 and four as a pro, also coming off of... A pretty devastating loss uh, at the hands of one Ilya Topuria. Mark, give us your take and your pick. Yeah, I still think Jai Herbert is good. He, uh, he's he been dealt a pretty tough hand in the UFC. He debuted against Francisco Trinaldo and looked good in, until he ended up losing that fight. Um, then he had a fight uh, Renato Mo- <clears throat> Renato Moicano. Then gets comma worthy and gets a win. Then gets thrown in there with Ilya Topuria. So he's fought a bit of a murderer's row so far. I think this fight is obviously a different level than those, and I think he's going to show out. I think this is a matchup where he can really put it on. Kyle Nelson, also Nelson coming up from featherweight, so there won't be really much of a size issue for Herbert. Um, I think he puts it on him. He's going to have the crowd behind him. I think it kind of looks like that round one he had against Ilya Taporia, except this time the man falls down and he gets the win. So I will say Jai Herbert, round one KO. Okay. Moving up into the flyweight division. I'm very excited for this fight. We have Charles Johnson taking on Mohamed Makayev. Makayev, of course, making a splash in his UFC debut, the last event at uh, London, which was the last UFC fight night London, uh, back in March where he defeated uh, Cody Durden by submission via... Uh, yeah, via guillotine choke uh, in the very first round. Charles, I love this energy, inner as in like within energy. <laughs> the American on foreign ground, eleven and two as a professional, thirty-one years old, riding a four-fight win streak in LFA, making his UFC debut. Give us your take on Muhammad Makayev welcoming Charles Johnson for his debut into the UFC. On his home turf. I think this one is only going one way. Uh, the 21-year-old Muhammad Makayev on a path to try to be the youngest champion ever. Uh, I don't know if he's going to get there in time because I think he would only have like a year to do that. I'm trying to remember exactly. 
uh, what the number is. I think it's 22. But, um, yeah, he has everything. He, he does it all. This fight has some hype on it. They've been talking a lot of shit back and forth, actually, coming into this one. Um, I don't know Johnson well, but I, I've seen some, some clips of him, and the man can certainly kickbox. So that makes me think Makayev will just go to the wrestling in this one. So I think we will probably see a couple slams and eventually a tap. So I, I will say Muhammad Makayev round two submission, and he, he continues up the flyweight ranks. Nice, nice. I'll, I'll say round one TKO this time. I think Makai is going to keep rolling. He's going to stay undefeated and probably get a nice opponent in the next time. They're probably in London again. I don't know. They're letting these London guys just kind of hang out in the UK. It's great. Yeah, it Everybody is. Everybody cool. involved. Okay. <clears throat> Marching up now into the featherweight division, Makwan Amir Khani taking on Jonathan Pierce. Amir Khani? The Finn from Finland, his nickname, Mr. Finland, coming off a win against Mike Grundy uh, back in March at UFC Fight Night, Volkov Ospinal of UFC London. He's 33 years old. His record stands at 17-7 and seven with 12 submission victories. Jonathan Pierce, the American challenger, JPS, 12-4 and four is a pro, he's 30 years old, riding a three-fight win streak uh, coming into Saturday night, most recently uh, defeating Christian Rodriguez by UD back in February. Mark, give us your take. So I haven't been giving you guys the lines. Uh, for what it's worth, everyone I've picked so far was a fairly large favorite. Um, but I'll tell you in this one, because I'm going to go with the dog here, um, Maquan Americani is a plus 170 dog. Uh, Jonathan Pierce is like minus 210-ish. Um but I think that Amir Khani can win this fight. I, I'm just not I'm not 100% sold on Jonathan Pierce being able to stay safe. His None of his wins are wins that make me feel like he is definitely this level. He looks good. He could be this level. But he had some, some struggles grappling with Joe Lozon. Maquan Amir Khani is not terribly dissimilar. I know it's always risky as hell picking an Amir Khani fight because... As good as he looks when he wins, then when he loses, he kind of like looks great in round one and starts to gas. But it feels like he's been working through that lately, improving that hole in his game. And um, I kind of think he's going to catch Pierce. I think Pierce might might look for the takedown, feel a little too comfortable in there, and and be the next victim of of Maquan Americani. He snatches things up real fast. Guys don't see it coming, and I'm going to say he does it again. I will say round one sub. Love it. Love that pick. I will parrot that pick. I will echo you. I'm going to say round one sub as well. Uh, I think he's a specialist, and I like his chances against Jonathan Pierce here. Uh, and he's going to go two in a row now in the UFC. Uh, I believe it'll be his – no, it'll be his second time. No, third time. Uh, winning more than one fight in a row. Okay, let's move on. To the featherweight division again, Nathaniel Wood taking on Charles Boston Strong Rosa. Nathaniel, the prospect Wood, the hometown boy uh, from Morden, England, Greater London area, twenty-eight year old, pretty young in his prime, seventeen and five as a pro, coming off a loss against Casey Kenny. Both guys looking to get back in the win column because Charles Rosa coming off back-to-back -back losses against Damon Jackson and T.J. Brown. Coming in Saturday night, Rosa from Massachusetts, hence the nickname Boston Strong, 35-year-old, turning 36 this August. He's 14-7 and seven as a professional with eight submissions to his name. Should be a good matchup. Mark, give us your pick. Yeah, so Nathaniel Wood finally makes the move up to featherweight here. He's teased it for a while. He's had some struggles making weight at Bantamweight. Makes the move up. Uh, I'm a little surprised he didn't get a bigger name opponent out of the gate. He's a guy who was, like, at least kind of touching on the top 20 at Bantamweight. I'm not sure. If, I actually think he was ranked at one point um, by the UFC. So he was kind of up there at, at Bantamweight. Um, I thought maybe he would get a little bit more of an established name than Charles Rosa. Uh, he is a pretty big favorite. He's, like, minus 500. Um, and I think he gets it done. Rosa is tough. He's tricky. But I think Wood is just the better striker. I think he's more capable overall. I think he maybe hurts Rosa at one point, and I'll say he takes a clear decision. 
Yeah, I'll take the guy with the better finish rate as well. Nine knockouts, five subs for Nathaniel Wood. I think this is going to be a fun one for the hometown crowd of London to watch. I'll go Nathaniel Wood. Uh, let's go first round TKO. I'm actually going to change my pick. I don't think it makes it to the cards. I'm going to, I'm going to say Wood finishes him late. Third round TKO. Okay. Let's see. Fun one. In the lightweight division, we have the 15-5, and five, Mark Jacasey, the hometown guy, taking on Demir. How do you say his last name? Do you know? Hadzovich. 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 From Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Bosnian bomber, Demir Hadzovich. 35-year-old, also turning 36 this August, 14-6 and six as a pro. Pretty decent finish rate. Seven knockouts, three subs coming off of a victory against Yancey Medeiros uh, back of June of last year. And then you have Mark Jacasey. Uh I've always liked Mark Jacasey. He's an exciting guy to watch. 29-year-old in that prime from uh, Doncaster, England. 15-5 to as a pro. Uh, mostly decisions, eight decisions to his name. Uh, also coming off of a victory Back on UFC on ESPN 33 in March of this year. Mark, give us your take and your pick. I'm going Mark Jacasey. I think he has hit a point where he's finally putting it all together. Obviously, he debuted in the UFC with some hype. He's had his ups. He's had his downs. I think it's coming together now for him. Uh, last fight, we saw a fight where he was able to really show off his wrestling. And I feel like we're going to get the flip of that here. Um Hadzovich, he he could wrestle, but I'm not sure you want to go on the ground with Hadzovich. Um, but I think that this will be one where Jacasey can show off the striking. I think Hadzovich is kind of straightforward on the feet. Not that he can't hurt you because he can, but I think Jacasey is just too varied of a striker, too fluid of a striker. I think he's going to land clean on Hadzovich, and I'm going to say he looks really good and finishes it off in round two. Knockout. Knockout for Jacasey. Wow. Not a lot of knockouts. On his record, uh, it's funny because he looks so impressive. He has a great physique, but I, I have not always thought of him as a as a big knockout guy. I don't, I don't um, necessarily either. I just feel like the way he is trending, the UK crowd behind him, the fact that I think Hadzovich is pretty hittable. I'm gonna, hmm. I'm gonna say it all comes together beautifully, and I'll probably be wrong, but that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I think another fun one for Jacasey, but I'm going to say he'll get it done by decision. I'll go unanimous decision for Jacasey here. Okay, next matchup in the featured bout on the prelims on ESPN Plus. Mason, excuse me, in the lightweight division, Mason the Dragon Jones takes on Ludovic, Mr. Highlight Klein. So Klein is the on the away team here. He is from Slovakia, 27 year old. 18 and 4 as a pro. Uh, coming off of a win against Devontae Smith at, and UC 272 back in March of this year by split decision. Mason Jones, the dragon again, the Welshman. 27 years old, 11 and 1 as a pro with one no contest. Also coming off of a win against David Onama back in October of last year. Four knockouts, three subs of those 11 victories. So not a bad finish rate. For the Dragon Jones, Mark, give us your take. I like Mason Jones. I think that he is better than he has been able to show in the UFC thus far. He's had some cancellations. He had um, a no contest at one point in a fight that he was clearly winning. So he's had some tough breaks. Um, Klein is a dangerous fighter. Obviously, the man can strike. He can't be dismissed. Comes out hot in round one. I think Jones will have to get through round one. Um, but I think he can. I think Jones will ultimately just out. MMA him. I think he can take the fight where he wants it, present more challenges than, than Klein can. Uh, I think he'll outpace him. I think he'll push the pace, and I think he'll win the cards in a fun fight. Yeah, I like Jones. I feel like on the prelims, <laughs> UFC has done a, a decent job of matching up all the hometown guys with uh, opponents that where they should walk away with the, with the W. So I'll take Jones as well. I'll say TKO in round two. Uh, but I feel like that's not so much the case, Mark, in the main card where things get a bit more dicey, a bit more competitive. So let's march up now into this main card for UFC London, UFC Fight Night, uh, Blades versus Aspinall. 
Starting things off in the main card in the light heavyweight division, Paul Craig takes on Vulcan Uzdemir. Uh, Uzdemir coming off of a few losses. Uh, let me pull this up real quick. Couple. Pause. Yeah, back to back losses against Prohaska and Ankhlaev. Uh Nothing to scoff at. But I personally didn't think that Uzmir uh, looked very good in either of those fights. I think he's looked pretty hittable. And then you have Paul Craig, who is, you know, fight by fight has become sort of a fan favorite. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, for sure. I would agree. Yeah, absolutely. And again, on home turf, he is the Scotsman. And he is riding a four-fight win streak. He hasn't lost a fight since 2019 against Alonzo Menefield. Uh, coming off of a submission win against Nikita Krylov back in March of this year. So this is a fun fight. Give us your, your, your pick, Mark. It is a fun fight. I, I had kind of been hoping that Paul Craig would get something bigger than this. I, I almost feel like his resume of late has kind of already moved him past Vulcan Ozdemir, so... He's got to make. I feel like Ozdemir is almost a similar level of test that Krulov was, but obviously, Craig's gonna have to take a little bit of the long road here. He'll have to make another stop and prove that he can get past uh, Ozdemir, and he is the dog. He is plus one thirty. Is Paul Craig? Uh, Ozdemir is minus one sixty. I think I'm gonna go with Paul Craig. Um, it's it's such an interesting fight because Paul Craig obviously can be hit though he's improving that a lot there was a time where he was almost there to be hit and it, and if Vulcan gets to hit you clean you're gonna drop the man's got sneaky power even in small shots um but Craig has been improving that part of his game a lot he's getting much more comfortable as a striker he's honestly getting much more comfortable everywhere he used to even kind of struggle to get fights to the mat where he wanted them and now he's getting so much better at even if it's unorthodox ways he he gets you down there so his game is just really coming together in a way that works for him. Um, but he's going to have to make sure to not get cracked by Vulcan because the power is real. And then on the flip side, if this thing does hit the mat, um, Vulcan, you know, he has great takedown days, so I'm sure he's thinking he can keep it up. But if he lets it hit the mat, I don't think he lasts long down there. So I think each guy's playing with fire, depending if they're, if they're standing or if they're on the ground. Um I just think, like I said, I think Craig has gotten really crafty and really good at finding ways to get things to the mat, to create off-balance situations, even if it's not a traditional takedown. I just think you end up there with him. And if he can avoid – I'm sure he'll get hit with some things early. If it's not a one-hitter quitter, you know, if he can just – if he can eat a couple things and stay in it, I think it ends up falling to the ground one way or another, even if it's a pull guard type situation. And I think when they're there, I'm going to trust Paul Craig to get it done. I will say Paul Craig gets another submission and, and keeps going up. Love it. Uh, I think that's the perfect pick because that's also my pick. I think I'm, I'm really picking against Vulcan Ozdemir at this point. Uh, other than Alir Latifi, uh, he had a split decision against against Rakic. Other than that, lost to Cormier, lost to Anthony Smith, lost to Dominic Reyes, lost to Prohaska, lost to Ankalaev. This guy, at this point, I feel like he's not really top tier, and I think he's hittable. And I think that Paul Craig is going to get inside, and he's going to wrap those longer arms around Vulcan Ozdemir. And like you said, I think this fight is going to wind up on the mat, and Paul Craig is going to do what he does best, and that is submissions. Uh, I forgot to mention, of his 16 victories as a professional, 13 of them wins by submission. This man is a specialist, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Don't get it twisted. Uh, so I'm going to say, Paul Craig, by submission, I'll go round two because it's in the middle. <laughs> what did I say? Did I say round one? I forget what I even said now. I might have said round one. <laughs> Maybe I didn't say. I as well. I might have just... Oh, I, you didn't say round. Hmm. Hmm. Round one. Let's go. Be bold. Okay. I think the streak for the Brits and the the, the English is gonna be pretty pretty good for this for this card. Okay, Molly Meatball McCann taking on Hannah twenty four K Goldie. Uh 
Molly, the home team here from Liverpool. From Liverpool. Uh, Two-fight win streak going into Saturday night. Uh, most recently defeating Luana Carolina at uh, excuse me at the at the most previous UFC London uh, back in March round three TK uh, excuse me round three knockout via spinning elbow beauty Hannah Goldie the American challenging on foreign soil thirty years old six and two as a pro her record's only six and two I thought it was wow, less than that to be not honest. a lot of fights. How do you get in the I, UFC with only six? I thought she had like five fights. <laughs> <laughs> You're not close. You're not far off. Yeah, six, six uh, and two. Hannah Goldie is coming off of a win against Emily Whitmere back in September of 2021. Submission via armbar in the first round. So give me your take, Mark. What's your pick between Hannah Goldie and Molly McCann? So this one fits your bill of uh, the British fighters matched up with someone who they can beat. McCann is minus 400 here. Goldie is plus 310. Um, it's interesting because Goldie is, as you said, she's kind of new to the game. She's learning on the job. She has shown some signs. She's a physical force. Um, and McCann, as good as she is, you know, sometimes, like, what she's doing doesn't 100% make sense in there, and she loses around in a way that she shouldn't and so on. So I could actually see this turning into kind of a scrap and being a fun one. So I do think McCann wins no matter what, but uh, I, I think maybe she may even drop around somehow, and and it'll be like 29-28 McCann instead of what feels like should be a 30-27. But I, I think fun fight, fans behind her, McCann wins a decision. As I often do, Mark, I like your analysis. <laughs> I'll make it interesting. I'll say Hannah Goldie steals one by a split decision. Ooh. And Molly McCann is going to disappoint. Although last time at UFC London, oh, baby. It, it was like a fucking dance party when she it won. It was incredible. It was incredible. To be honest, I didn't before the most previous UFC in London, I, I wasn't that familiar with Molly McCann. But my God, she's so popular. Oh yeah, she's Over there. well. I, I think it's the Pimblet Association has totally has really Liverpool skyrocketed thing. her. Absolutely, but yeah. I mean, Absolutely. she's got a nice Solid. little UFC record. She's five and three in the UFC. So yeah. Okay, moving up to the big boys in the light heavyweight division, we have Nikita Krylov taking on Alexander the Mauler Gustafsson. So. Uh, neither one of these guys are really the hometown guy. This is a, a Ukrainian taking on a Swede. So Krylov, the miner, uh, M-I-N-E-R, by the way. So it's like someone who works in a mine, not not a young person, you sicko. Uh, 30 years old, from Ukraine, uh, 6'3". Record stands at 27-9. and nine. No joke. Great finish rate. Only one victory by decision. 11 knockouts, 15 submissions. He is, however, coming off back-to-back -back losses. Most recently, against Paul Craig, who was also on this card. Uh, uh, at the most previous UFC fight night in London back in March. Uh, Paul Craig finished him with a triangle choke in the first round. Alexander Gustafsson really needs no introduction. One of the great light heavyweights that the sport has seen. At this point, he's 35 years old, 18 and 7 as a pro, uh, 11 knockouts. However, he is riding a three fight losing streak coming into Saturday night, losing against John Jones, Anthony Smith, and Fabricio Verdum at heavyweight back in July of 2020. So he's trying to turn back time, get a win at UFC London. Mark, give us your take and your pick. Can you believe we're picking an Alexander Gustafson fight right now? It feels weird. Like, I almost didn't expect to see him again. Um, and I feel like this yeah, kind of... Yeah, I, I thought he was like done. I, when I went to look at this card for this show, I was like, oh, shit, we're at, we're at it. Like, it's the Gustafson one. Like, yeah. I, I forgot it was even happening. Um, this is a hard one for me. It, it's... I have this issue in picking fights. It's that I look at this fight, and I think that prime Alexander Gustafson wouldn't lose to Nikita Krulov. And mm -hmm. it makes me want to pick Gustafson. And then I end up being wrong when I do it. 
because frankly, the man hasn't won a fight in five years. So he is not prime Alexander Gustafson at all. Um, and Krulov is a tough matchup. Like, Krulov is super dangerous everywhere. He, he's a tough guy to try to shake rust off uh, against. Like, he will hurt you on the feet. He's in there to scrap. He'll take you down. Even if you take him down, he's active on bottom. He can snatch up subs out of nowhere. And Gustafson's been a little bit prone to being subbed at times. He lost his last one by sub, I want to say, right? To Verdum. That was by sub, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do, which is pick Gustafson because this is just who I am and I can't help it. But uh, don't follow me betting this one because it's a dangerous ask for Gustafson to return here. Obviously, we have no idea what he's going to look like. I'd love to say that he will stuff takedowns that that Krulov tries to initiate, that he can maybe even get his own and that he'll be able to be safe on top and have some ground and pound, or that he'll just keep it standing and we'll see the old Gus who can keep that range and even though there's like head kicks coming at him and some crazy things from Krulov that... He's just the one scoring more, landing cleaner shots, winning with his boxing. And um, I will say for the sake of the pick, we get a 29-28 Gus. But again, do not follow me here because five years since a win, a uh, couple years off, don't know what he's going to look like. I think I think it's a tough matchup to walk back into. So just a little bit of the, of the history. So he tried to go up to heavyweight. He took on Fabricio Verdum. Probably thought he was going to have a speed advantage. He lost that fight via armbar in round one. Um, then he was going to go back down to light heavy and face Paul Craig right, in right. a light heavyweight bout in September of 2021. However, a week before that event, uh, Gus withdrew with an injury. Then he was supposed to uh, face Ben Rothwell at heavyweight oh, again good. in May of this year. However, at the end of March, it was announced that Ben Rothwell was released by the UFC. And here we are in the summer of 2022. And Gus finally has a fight. And it is in 48 hours or 72 hours or whatever. Hopefully, it all goes according to plan. I, I, that being I said. I should note before you pick. He is the dog. He's plus 170. Krulov is minus 200. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. I, I feel like I want to... Of course, I want to pick Gus because he's a, a. I mean, I hesitate to call him a legend. Small he's, L, I'll, I'll say, small L legend. He's, he's a he's a little bit of a legend. Yeah. And uh, but that being said, I want to take a page and learn from watching Misha Tate. Yeah. And be like, you know what? I'm gonna learn from my mistakes. <laughs> yeah, you're better at being smart about these than me. I, I always get too <laughs> sentimental. <laughs> Yeah, in in sort of in Misha style, I'm like he's he's was is he 35 as well? Yep, Gus, he's 35, ton of miles on his body, on that huge Swedish body, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know he's trying to he tried to, what's the word, revitalize himself by going up to heavyweight. He was gonna then he was probably cutting again to try to fight Paul Craig. That didn't happen. Then he was gonna go up again and fight Ben Rothwell, and that didn't happen. So all these training camps are also taking a toll as well, yep, I agree. and also time. And I think, like you said, I think Krylos is not a, the best matchup for him, quite frankly. A, a guy who is as dangerous as, as Krulov. So I will go Krulov. I think Krulov is going to finish him. And I'll say it's not going to look pretty. Oof. And then I think Gus is going to have to walk away. And I've been a big Alexander Gustafson fan from the get-go. Uh, but I think he's going to walk away. He probably should walk away because I think that Krulov is going to finish him by TKO. In round one. Oof. That would be tough. That would be tough. Yeah. Okay. Fun one. Lightweight division. We have Patty the Batty Pimblet taking on Jordan Levitt. Uh, so Patty might be the most popular guy on this whole card. Patty the Batty from Liverpool coming off of uh, most recently his win against uh, Rodrigo Vargas. Uh, back at UFC London in March, finished him with the rear naked choke in round number one. Patty riding a four fight win streak as a pro. He's two and zero so far in the UFC, and he is eighteen and three overall 
with six KOs, eight submissions. That's a pretty good finish rate. I like what I see. Jordan, the Monkey King Levitt from the U.S. He is the challenger in this case from Las Vegas. He himself is also riding a two-fight win streak coming into Saturday night. Uh, most recently, a split decision win over Trey Ogden back in April of this year. Uh, Ten and one as a pro, Jordan Levitt. So pretty impressive stuff so far. Uh, only one knockout, six submissions though to his name. So two guys that are both pretty comfortable on the on the mat here. Uh, what's your assessment, Mark, of this matchup? Um, I just closed the odds by accident, <laughs> which I wanted oh. to give you to start. Here we go. Um, so, Patty is the favorite here. He's minus 260, and Jordan Levitt is plus 210 on the other end. Um, so, yeah, the UFC continues their slow march of Patty Pimblett up the ranks. It is a slow march. Um, it's, it's been baby steps that, that they're giving him here, but I get it. I do think that this is the one where if he beats Jordan Levitt, looks good doing it. I think next fight he's in there with someone who feels a lot more dangerous. Um, but yeah, I personally, I think this one, I think, I think we're going to follow the pattern. Uh, Patty Pimblett debuted against Vendramini, used his striking, looked fantastic there. Next fight against Vargas, he was more of a striking threat. Patty reminded everyone what a grappler he is, went to the sub game. I think we're coming back the other way now. I, I think Jordan Levitt's only way to win this fight is via submission. I don't think he's going to be tapping out Patty Pimblett. Um, we could see some really great grappling exchanges, but personally, I think Patty's going to look to just keep this one standing and, and put the pause on Jordan Levitt's face. He, uh, I thought that before even hearing Patty speak, then I heard him today saying that that's what he has every intention to do, that he's not even looking to grapple at all. And I think that's what it is. I, th I think we see Patty blitz him. Um, you know, Levitt's crafty, kind of oddly crafty. Maybe he gets him to the ground. Maybe he kind of drags it so that we get past round one and it ends up being round two. But I think either way, one of the first two rounds, there's, there's a blitz, a couple big shots. Levitt goes down. UK crowd goes crazy. Patty Pimblett, KO, victory. Or TKO, I guess I should say, victory. Um, sure. I will. I guess I got to pick around. I will say, I'll say it gets into round two. You think it does? I like it. Uh, yeah, I'll go TKO round two as well. I love that pick, and I love uh, this matchup. I think the O2 arena is going to explode when Patty Pimblett uh, wins this fight and possibly teabags Jordan Levitt <laughs> yeah, in the octagon. Yes, yes that's right. But she said that he was going to do. He was like, he's going to twerk on me? No, no, no. I'm going to teabag love him. It, love it. Yeah. It's going to be I exciting. I hope we see it. I hope we see it. A lot of energy that this guy brings into the cage, man. Patty Pimlet. He may not be the new Conor McGregor, but he is a one of a kind. That is for sure. Yes. This, okay, let's go co-main event. Is this a daytime card? I didn't even think about that. It probably is because it's in the UK, London. right? Let's get that answer. Yeah, it sure is. Sure is. What, does it start at noon or something for us? The, exactly right. The prelims start at noon and the main card is at three. All right. All right. <laughs> Not my favorite. <laughs> Especially yeah. after I already had to deal with that last week and missed so many of them, but okay. Let's continue. Co-main. Co-main. Jack the Joker Hermanson taking on Chris Curtis. Welcoming Chris Curtis, in a sense, to the upper echelon of middleweight. Let's break this down real quick. Get out of my face, Jordan Levitt. Get out of my face, Nikita Krylov. I'm close closing some tabs. Okay. We're here. Man, I got to say, I I've always liked Hermanson, but I have really become a fan of Chris Curtis since he joined the UFC uh, just three fights ago. He made a big splash by taking out uh, a big prospect in Phil Hawes, knocking him out at the end of round one of their fight back in November. Then he comes back, he TKOs Brendan Allen, another prospect, and then he beats... 
uh, Adolfo Vieira by unanimous decision just this past June. And now he's right back in there less than a month uh, after. So winning a lot of fans, Chris Curtis is. Uh, Jack Hermanson, easily the toughest opponent of his entire career. Jack Hermanson, uh, the Swede, 22-7 and seven as a pro, 34 years old. Uh, he's coming off of a split decision loss, right, against Sean yeah. Strickland. So Hermanson kind of known as a submission guy, but also has 11 knockouts to his name. Uh, so, Mark, give us your assessment yes. of Chris Curtis stepping up against Hermanson. Yeah, Hermanson's got that ground and pound power, man. You do not want to be under Hermanson. He will he will finish you, whether it's with the sub or the ground and pound, for sure. Um, oh, wait, here, let me give you the odds on this one as well. Oh, this one is a dead pick -em. Both guys minus 110. No way. Yep, wow. Pretty interesting. Um, if you are someone who regularly watches this show, you know who I'm picking here because I am contractually bound to pick Chris Curtis. I have picked against this man in all three of his UFC fights. I took Phil Hawes. I took Brandon Allen. Wow. And then I took Adolfo Vieira. And I said that if I was wrong again, it didn't matter if Chris Curtis fought Francis Ngannou in his next fight. I would pick him. I was wrong again. So here we are. I am picking Chris Curtis. Um... It worked out for me that it's actually what I think is a winnable fight for him. Um, you know, Jack Hermanson's beatable. He's There's times where he looks really dominant in there. Like I said, if he gets on top of you, you're in trouble. But he's also a guy who kind of struggles to get things there sometimes. he's His, his takedown game is more of like a, a hold-you-close trip type takedown game. It's not anything that where, where he's blasting you or or – wrestling technique like a like a dc style it's more it's more um that he needs that that clinch first and, and kind of drags you down and i think chris curtis is well equ equipped to deal with that it's it's sort of similar to what Vieira was trying to do to him in his last fight and he dealt with it really well so i think he can absolutely win this fight now if he does get taken down like i said he he may be in some trouble but I, I am bound to pick him here, so I will say that he can keep it on his feet, that he resists these. Hermanson is long, but I, I think Chris Curtis is just looking really smooth with the hands lately, and I, I think he can keep it standing and, and peace and peace and peace and peace say that he uh, wins a 29-28 UD. I think it's going to be a little bit of a war between these two guys. Uh, I'll go Hermanson. I'll say that Chris Curtis does hit a little bit of a speed bump at this point in his career. Uh, he is the newer to the UFC, but he is the older man in the cage on Saturday night. So I'm going to say that the Joker does get him to the ground, uh, and he will get the best of him there. He's going to be heavy on top and long on top. Uh, I'll say that he gets a unanimous decision victory because I think Chris Curtis is a pretty fucking tough guy, uh, and he's going to survive. But I'm going to say that Hermanson is going to cruise – to a UD. The Curtis story is wild, man. The guy's 35, and I think it, that this is his 38th fight, and he's just now hit, like, the biggest point of his career. It's pretty pretty crazy. And Hannah Goldie is in the UFC <laughs> after, like, two fights. Yeah. Like, what's going yeah. on? Weird. All right, main event time. Here we go. In the heavyweight division, two guys who are absolute beasts in the heavyweight Ooh. division. Let me pull this up real quick. We have Curtis Razorblades taking on the one and only England's own Tom Aspinall. Let me start with Curtis Blades, the American from Illinois, 31 year old, 16 and three, stands at six foot four of his 16 wins, 11 by knockout or TKO. Well, most of his wins wind up on the ground. None of them have ended by submission. All TKO, all ground and pound, all day. Um, coming off of a tremendous TKO victory against Chris Dawkins back in March uh, at UFC, at, excuse me, at UFC Fight Night Blades versus Dawkins. Okay, Tom Aspinall, the hometown guy, 
Last time we saw him was right here at the O2 Arena when he defeated Alexander Volkov uh, by submission via straight armbar, where he rocked him in the first round and finished it on the ground. Tom Aspinall is 12 and 2 as a pro. He's only 29 years old. That's pretty young for heavyweight. Six foot five of his 12 victories. He has finished all 12 of his opponents with nine knockouts, three submissions, no victories by decision. Tom Aspinall is a finisher. Okay, Mark, now you can talk. As I Google Tom Aspinall's reach. All right, only two inches less than Curtis Blades. All right, so pretty close odds here. Aspinall's the favorite. He's minus 135. Curtis Blades is plus 110. Um. And I'll tell you why. It, I'll tell you why it's that close. It's because Tom Aspinall, as good as he has looked, he has not fought anyone that remotely resembles the game and the challenge of a Curtis Blades. He has not even fought like an okay wrestler, really, necessarily. Um, you know, I guess, you know, Sir Volkov, okay wrestler, but I'm saying no one whose game is wrestling like this, and Blades is as good as it gets there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Aspinall can can get through this one and can show out against a guy who has a dominant skill set like Curtis Blades does. Um, but you know me, going with my boy, I'm going with the future heavyweight champion Tom Aspinall. We're getting there uh, bit by bit here. Um, I I think it's a tough a tough one for Blades. He uh, it, this is another one like I just said about Hermanson. Oof. Would I be stunned if Curtis Blades? Was able to get on top and do work? No, because he, he's Curtis Blades. Like, I'm not ruling it out. But yeah. I think Curtis Blades either has to take Tom Aspinall down, which won't be super easy to do, and then when he's down there, has to worry about Tom Aspinall's jiu-jitsu. Or I think he has to be standing on the feet across from Tom Aspinall where he's going to be at a distinct disadvantage. I know that he just got a beautiful KO uh, of Chris Dawkins in his last fight. Curious to see how much he falls in love with the hands. I couldn't believe he struck with Dawkins. Um, you would think he's going to come out against Aspinall and look for the takedown because Aspinall is a bit more dangerous in the striking than Dawkins is. But you never know. You, you never know what Curtis Blades is going to do. He kind of has these weird game plans sometimes. Um, but I just think all the dangers on the on the Tom Aspinall side. I think that he is so crafty. I think he lands shots from angles that you don't see coming. I think he has power on shots that you don't expect to have the power that they do. I think his footwork's going to be a problem for Blades. Blades is not always the best at initiating the takedown. He sometimes puts his head in places it shouldn't be. Uh, I think Aspinall could connect on knees, could connect on uppercuts. I just love the dude's game. I, I think that he's going to be hurting Blades on the feet. Um, I could see it hit the mat. I could see Aspinall get up. I could even see Aspinall go for a takedown to mix things up. It wouldn't shock me. I, I just think that he is the overall better mixed martial artist. Uh, I believe in this man. I think that he is going to make it look fairly easy. Uh, not not Ooh. as easy as he did against Volkov. Wow. I'm going to say this thing's over by round two. Tom, Tom Aspinall, TKO, wow. round two. You know, I was going to pick Curtis Blades. But you make such a compelling <laughs> case. Fuck it. I'm still picking Curtis Blades. Uh, I will say I have a somewhat different take than you. I mean, I do love watching Tom Aspinall. Um, I'm going to say that he runs into Curtis Blades and he's like, oh, shit. This is a game plan and a level of talent that I have not ever faced yep. before. It's entirely, and I'm going to say that possible. Curtis Blades... Yeah, I'm going to say that Curtis Blades does get Tom Aspinall to the ground. And I'm going to say that Tom Aspinall is going to be like, I have jiu-jitsu. And Curtis Blades is going to laugh <laughs> and pound his it's face. It's also very possible. Into, into, the, into the canvas. And I'm going to go <laughs> Curtis Blades handing Tom Aspinall only his third loss of his career. I'm going to say he's going to do it by TKO. And I'll say round two as well. Isn't it weird that Tom Aspinall has losses? Like, he's one of those guys that absolutely feels like he's undefeated. Like, and then you remember yes. he's not, and it's like, wait, who beat him? I'm like, yeah. I mean, I know he's undefeated in the UFC, 
and I, I'm sure that's part of it. But yeah, he has this aura of of a sort of right of a guy, guy who hasn't been topped. Yes, I I agree. Um, but yeah, it's it's very possible. You know, we always see this in MMA. We see these guys who look like it's like, man, who's going to beat them? And then they run into a certain style, and it's like, oh, well, that's how you beat them. So this right. could be it. it. It could be that he can't stop Blades' takedowns, and it could be that Blades is so heavy on top and, and has such good ground and pound that his jiu-jitsu doesn't work from down there. Could absolutely be it. And that's what I meant earlier when I said that's why the odds are close. Um, yeah. But I, I couldn't be more firmly on the Tom Aspinall train. So I believe he's getting it done. All right, man. Well, that's it for our preview of UFC London.